What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. Alex Nasla here. So, you, if you watch my channel, you know that I do many things. Uh, mixing is not one of them. No. It's something that I've dabbled in so gently. It's eluded you. Basically, I looked down that rabbit hole. I gazed down the long, dark tunnel of mixing and mastering audio, and I was like, no, I want to be a musician instead. For the most part, it's worked out pretty well. I send the things to professionals instead, and I let them worry about it. I worry about all the front end, tracking, basic stuff, you know, writing the music, performing it, all the production gear, and not the posts. Right. I remember, I remember many years ago, I found Trey in this tunnel, searching, <laughs> looking around, dark, and he found me, and he was like, come, I will show you the way out of this. Horrible place. The thing is, at the same time, there's a certain amount of it that I need to know. And I, actually, I've been sort of dipping my toes. Yes. Just a little bit more, because there's a lot of it that's really handy to know. Um, oh, yeah. Even if I'm not going to be mixing full-on productions or anything like that, there's a lot of stuff that is really going to help me with every aspect. Right. I mean, if, you, music, if so. you want things to sound cohesive and coherent... Uh, knowing some aspects of how mixing works and what goes into it lets you make better decisions recording. Right. There are guys that I know who are like one-stop shops, right? Mm -hmm. When they're tracking the guitars, he can think through to the end product. Right. I can't really do that. Over the last few years, because I've been doing it so much, I've had to think about this, right? right? Going back and forth with people like yourself about getting the mix a certain way. And right. you go like, okay, Trey, I can't do the thing that you're asking me right. because when you tracked it, you did this stupid, this right. bonehead move. The thing that we're gonna look at today that you're gonna show me doesn't exactly fall under that category, but I still wanna know more about it because and I'm a you, songwriter. And, and you you have a big part into how the, dr uh, the drums sound in the songs you write. I mean, I, yeah, like an in virtue. I mean, I think you pretty much had the yeah, ma I mean, ma major hand in. Well, because I, when I'm writing the songs, the general parts are there. Right. Like you start with just this like super basic groove. Right. That I've kind of like programmed into the <laughs> superior or whatever, and then you just go like, oh well. It sounds really boring. Let me just give it a little fill here, and right. then a little like, right. and then I'm gonna make it really realistic, and then right. and then you get like way into it, yeah. and then by the time it the it comes around to actually having a drummer record it, they play it differently, and you're like, yeah, yeah, but do you remember when I pro did you re did you do yeah. this? And I, I try not to be that heavy handed, right? But I care about the drums a lot, right? Even as a guitarist, I kind of like drums more. <laughs> I kind of care about drums more. <laughs> if there's any one element in a mix, in a metal mix that makes a mix stand out as a good mix or a bad mix, it's probably the drums. Drums are, are a huge, potentially right. a huge mess. Right, any average listener can tell yeah. that the dr when, when drums are bad, when they're good. Yeah. They just can't. So today what we're gonna look at doesn't only apply to drums, but right. it imp applies probably most importantly to drums, which is gating. Oh, yes. And I've used gates in various different forms on guitar, uh, also on, on drums and, and vocals and stuff, yeah. uh, but this is a different kind of gate that you're going to show me how yeah, to use. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So this is from an album uh, that I mixed and mastered a couple years ago by a Finnish band called Status Minor. Mm -hmm. They're a pretty cool group. They have like the drummer from Stradivarius, the keyboard player from Thunderstone, and a bunch of other awesome musicians. And yeah, they every now and then make a, a few albums. And this one is a concept album. Uh, about Slenderman, and it tells a story from beginning to end, and it is disturbing by the end. I read a review of uh, when the album came out, and the reviewer gave the album two stars out of five because he said it was the most disgusting thing he had ever listened to, and he was repulsed by it. They hated the lyrics, basically. They, they really hated the lyrics. But they liked the music and the production. Yes. Which you were responsible for the mix and the master? Yes, I mixed and mastered it. So it's, if, it's let's say, the people at home go and listen to the Status Minor album, which is called... Uh, Three Faces of Antoine. Three Faces of Antoine. Yes. And they're like, damn, this sounds good. And they want to learn how to make it, make it, their album sound that good. How can how can they do that? So if you guys actually want to know like how I mixed and mastered the entire album from start to finish, I actually have a course of me mixing and mastering this entire album on Pro Mix Academy. Yes, go to the description. There'll be a link. How convenient. Trey likes to make people's lives a lot easier. It's what he me does. Me in the future. Yes. Is helping you out. So in the link in the description below. 
uh, it'll take you to my course in ProMix Academy. It's a 10 hour course. It's really long. If you're a beginner, you can definitely learn from this course. I go from the very beginning. It's just tracks loaded into the session. I actually have the entire album in one session. By the end, you will have some sick sounding mixes. I might have to find 10 hours to kill just to learn a little bit, but I mean, right now you're gonna show me yes. this one specific thing. One of the most difficult things to do in metal production for drums, especially when you're dealing with real drums, is dealing with bleed that happens. That's the hardest thing for drummers to deal with too, is bleed. Yeah. I've recorded a lot of drums, I've mixed and mastered a lot of albums. These drum tracks are probably some of the better ones I've ever worked with. It is as minimal bleed as can yeah. be reasonably expected yeah. when recording a metal record. Okay, so this is kind of a best case scenario. Right. And even then, like, let's listen to one of the Tom tracks real okay. quick. You can hear the whole kit coming through. And then when the toms come in, they're of course louder than everything else, right. but they're not that much louder. Every time the snare hits, you can hear the resonance of the tom head come through. Like, you know, the difference between this bleed and the tom hits doesn't sound too bad. Like, this tom hits pretty loud compared to the bleed, but when we go into, like, compress the ever-living hell out of it, suddenly all these, all this bleed is gonna be the exact same volume yeah. as, the, as the toms, and that's no good. So, long story short, we wanna put the kibosh on all of the extraneous noise before we compress the ever-loving crap out of it. The plugin that we're going to use today, in theory, can tell the difference yeah. uh, so, if we teach it. Right, so I, I wish I had this plugin when I was mixing this album. Right. Uh, or, or really, just I wish it just existed sooner. I had to go in, listen to every single track, and whenever I heard a tom hit, like this rack tom hit, I would delete all the information before it that wasn't a tom hit, continue listening, and just keep clearing out any bleed manually one by one. So let's load it up, the plugin. It's uh, by AIX DSP. It is called Multiband Gate. And here it is. Right now the threshold is not set to anything. Let's just listen to it, listen to it dry. So clearly we can hear snare and a bunch of other stuff in there. So the first thing we wanna do is just raise the threshold to where So that caught rid of the symbols, but there's still the snare coming through. So let's raise it a little bit more. Still got the snare, just a little bit more. Perfect. Didn't get the snare, okay. The difference between the amplitude of the snare and the toms is extremely close. Right, And it seems in this like particular an, case, yes. A big problem would be that the gate wouldn't be able to tell the difference between like a slightly not that hard hit tom hit right. and a super bang and snare crack. Right, right, exactly. So then we need the multiband gate to, yeah. so here, to determine the difference a different way other than just the sheer volume of the hits, right? right? So, yeah. Okay, so what we're seeing in the background of this crossover bit is, the, is where... The, That's like the fundamental, the peak fundamental of the tom. Okay. So we can also mess with the release of hold if we want to make the uh, attack uh, and the uh, decay of the tom different. So let's make it shorter. That makes the gate close quicker, obviously. And that's um, a lot quicker. On just... On just the low end, which is cool. But if we want instead to make the, the mid band higher, we can just... So now you can hear it a little bit better. And right now the release is all the ways, but maybe we want it less. And you can solo it to hear it better if you want to. So there it is. Let's make it zero. Obviously, that's too much. Let's say it's a super fast death metal guy, and he's playing crazy fast tom fills. Yes. And you don't want the bottom end to fart all over everything. Exactly. Then you can tighten that up. Yeah. But you can leave the the top and you can leave the, like the attacky part basically. The attack, yeah. Yeah, because um, the attack part tends to be a, a higher, even like on a floor tom. Uh, yeah. The snap of the tom tends to be on a higher frequency. All right, well, let's do that a little bit. The l floor tom is going to have 
obviously the most low end. Right. And in any given situation, it's, it's not a, such a matter of whether or not you want more or less or whatever. You just want to have control of it, yes. right? So, for example, let's go to the floor tom, tom three, yep. and uh, see what are. kind of sound we can get out of that. So, lower that. Snare's coming through a little bit. Okay, so now we're just getting the toms, but he's playing, you, you hear that, like the crash cymbal, like very, very faintly. So let's see if we At can, the end. yeah, so let's see if we can tighten it to get rid of that. But that's coming, probably coming through more on the high end than anything else, right? Exactly. So can we tame the release on the high end? Yes, so we can. So that we can. don't hear it? There it is, it's gone. What's a good sound for the other two bands? So let's solo it and listen to it. Let's listen to the low end. Let's make that a little tighter. Yeah, you can actually hear Tom 1 and 2 before 3 comes in. And we put the plug-in back on. So now we've completely isolated the floor tom. And we got the EQ of the floor tom to be something a little more usable. I'm gonna mute these two, just listen to it before and after. I am right. I am right. I am right. Remember, this is just a gate. We haven't compressed anything yet. Cool, let's try it on the Tom 2 then. Yes. Let's bring the threshold back down. Find the new threshold. Yeah, so you wanna set the threshold just enough. Uh, where it gets the tom hits and not everything else, but sometimes you have to take into consideration that there might be softer tom hits. See, oh, it barely got that. But sometimes you want to like just check throughout your song to make sure about that. We have the threshold in a pretty good place, it seems, because it caught everything else. So it sounds like it's getting the floor tom hit as well, right? Mm hmm Let's see what we can do. Let's put all these back down to zero. So now it's just a low end. There it is. It's gone now. Until this plugin existed, that, that, that was basically impossible to do. I think now we're pretty good in terms of controlling the bleed on the toms. Let's real quick go to one of the snare tracks because snare also has bleed. And sometimes it's the worst bleed. Snare's bleed too, you know. Look at that. So let's see what we can do about this. So this is gonna be easier because the difference between the snare frequency and a hi-hat frequency is substantial. But also, if you look here, like the amplitude, the amplitude of the snare is just a lot more. I didn't take it all the way to the peak where the snare is, and the reason why is because a lot of times drummers uh, like to do ghost notes on snares. That way, uh, if they do do a, a ghost note, it'll still get picked up. There's still some hi-hat coming in. There's not that much you can do at that point. Um, but we can minimize it using this plugin because we have access to that specific band. Can we narrow the the frequency of the high band so that we can try to get just the higher end of the... Because yes, there's can. no snap of the... It depends where we are. We could try. That was a little dull. Yeah, you'd have to go like basically all the way down here, which yeah. doesn't sound that great. Let's, try let's hear what it sounds... It. Oh, yeah, bypass. Like, yeah. like it's a world of difference, especially in the mix. It's a massive difference, and we haven't even done uh, compression yet. Let's try and get just a, as much decay we can out of it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to get as much of that snare decay and minimize that hi-hat that's being hit at the same time. I'm messing around with the hold and release, mostly the release. So what happens when you increase the release, the gate um, takes longer to close back down to remove the bleed. More of the decay, more of the snare decay can come through. We want each part of the drum kit to still have that natural decay 
right. that you, you would hear from it. So I'm going through each band so I can, for example, on the high band, I can try, that's where most of the hi-hat is. I mean, there's a lot of snare snap that lives up there too, so we can't go too crazy with it. But I'm trying to just minimize that hi-hat as much as possible and not sacrifice too much of that snare snap. That's why I'm soloing it and listening to it. Yeah, see, if you take up the floor all the way, you hear it. Let's try that. It's quite a bit better. Yeah. So let me move this to the other snare tracks. The snare mid mic, I don't know, this is not a very common recording uh, technique with drums, but because uh, usually you just have the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. The mid, as you might imagine, is in the middle is in the middle um, that's why they call it that it actually i think it sounds pretty cool you can even just see here that it actually picks up the meat of the snare sound like a little bit better which one picks up the potatoes so let me raise that there we go so this one is a little more difficult it has a little more hi-hat in it apparently very little tweaking that has to be done since we copied it from the top snare because yeah it's still the same snare that's awesome. This is actually completely different from what I thought it was. I thought the multiband part referred to how it was triggering the gate, not what you could do to each part of the band as it was gating. This part here, you can hear like each band. So if you wanted to let more in of each band, you could. Like right now, I have everything, uh, the floor levels all the way to the, the bottom. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll solo this. So if I wanted to let the high end through of the of that band, I raise this and now we have more of that high end coming through. Oh, okay. So far I just haven't messed around with it that much. So you see how it's closing right before it gets to that hi-hat? Yeah. So we can raise it a little bit more. Having the visual guide for oh, it yeah. is extremely useful for me. Right. Because like, of course, trust your ears. Right, but at right. the same time, like if you can laser pinpoint it with yeah. with a nice visual, yeah, exactly. uh, like that, it it's just gonna make uh, your life that much easier and better. So right now we have all the snares and the toms going into this drum bus, soloed. Let's uh, compress and see what happens. I have here some compression loaded onto the drum bus. All the tracks we worked on, the snares and the toms, are going into this drum bus. So just to give you guys an example of when you're doing some compression that's required for metal drums, what that sounds like, and then when we turn on the, the multiband gate, uh, how that helps us. So check it out. You hear how high the hi-hat is? The hi-hat spot mics are muted. Here, I'll even mute the overheads. It didn't even make a difference. So that's all coming in from either the toms or the snares, probably a combination of both. Basically makes compressing any any of these tracks impossible because you'd have way too much bleed from the hi-hat. So let me turn on the multiband gate. hearing just the drum bus with the it. gate the difference is outrageous yeah it's not it's, it's crazy not, it's yeah. yeah even if you go in and clean it up manually you still can't change the attack and release of individual parts right. of that thing. That's exactly. something, that's the level right. that this brings it past right. just editing it right. manually. Yeah, it's the closest thing to a game changer for drum editing that I've come across in a while. All right, well, this was cool, pretty enlightening. If you guys wanna try this plugin out, you can check out the link that's in the description below where you'll also find a link to Alex's mixing course, which is called what? It's called Mixing and Mastering a Concept Album. It's on ProMix Academy. So as far as I'm aware, now that I think about it, my course is the only one out there that actually takes you through 
mixing and mastering an entire album. All right, guys, hopefully you learned something today like I did. Thanks to Alex for helping me out. Thanks to AIX DSP for sending over this plugin for us to try. You can find out more at the link in the description. And as always, if you haven't already, mash that subscribe button, smack the bell to join the notification squad, drop us a like, and leave a comment in the comment section letting us know uh, if you've ever had to gate toms and uh, clean up drums. Yeah and how you did it. Do you use something like this? Do you use a gate? Do you do it manually? Do you use, uh, you know, strip silence, whatever. Yeah. Uh, we wanna know, so let us know. We'll see you real soon.